Crown Jewel was one of the biggest shows of the year for WWE. Heading to Saudi Arabia amidst rumors of a potential invasion, everyone was on edge, but also tuning into the show given the quality of the card the company put on display. With the matches that were supposed to take place, everyone was happy about the fact that the company had gone forward with the show, and it said something that Triple H being in charge meant that fans were even looking forward to a show taking place in Saudi. This is Wrestling Up and let's take a look at everything that happened on the show. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Kicking off the event was one of the biggest matches of the night. Lashley left the ring to attack Brock from behind, getting the show started in a big way. He sent him into the steel steps and then hit him with a spear. This was followed by another spear through the barricade. They got into the ring and the match started properly with Lesnar hitting German suplex after German suplex on the former WWE champion. Brock hit an F5 out of nowhere to look to end the match early, but Lashley managed to kick out. Instead, Lashley got back and got the upper hand and went at Lesnar with all he had. He him with a spine buster and then tried the hurt lock it took a while but he finally locked in the hurt lock and it looked like lesnar was fading slowly instead brock pulled a move out of nowhere flipping around and pinning lashley's shoulders to the ground lashley was not able to unhook the hurt lock fast enough and this led him getting pinned for the three count that was it lesnar had won brock lesnar defeated bobby lashley lashley was less than happy with the loss and attacked brock who was celebrating he threw lesnar around and attacked him brutally outside leaving him lying down this feud was clearly far from over and the two might continue going at it in the future. The match was all about the new women's tag team champions. Asuka and Alexa had won the titles only recently heading into the match, and this was them hoping that their first proper match after the win would get off to a good start. Soon enough, Alexa was isolated in the wrong corner. Bliss hit a sunset flip. She then went to the top rope and got hit by both Io Sky and Dakota Kai. The duo looked to take her out with the giant superplex off the top rope, but all three suffered instead with Asuka hitting the powerbomb from the bottom taking them all out. Alexa looked to finish things up with the twisted Bliss, but Dakota Kai got her legs up in time. She went for another, but while the referee was distracted, Nikki Cross made her way out and hit Alexa with the neck breaker from the top rope. This led Dakota pin Alexa, and just like that, new champions were crowned. Dakota Kai and Eosky defeated Alexa Bliss and Asuka. Jake Paul and Logan Paul were shown arriving in the building, and it's clear that Logan is ready to take on Roman. The two men entered the cage and it looked like, for once, the deck was stacked in the favor of the Scottish superstar with Scarlet outside the cage. Drew and Cross hit each other with move after move, with McIntyre hitting a lariat and then a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. He hit the Michinoku driver and almost got the win, but Cross was able to kick out. Cross took back control with the suplex, but McIntyre stopped him and set up the Claymore. Scarlet came into play after all, with her climbing the cage and distracting him, which led to McIntyre getting hit with Mace. He was still able to recover in time to stop Cross. McIntyre dragged Cross back to the middle of the ring away from the door and Scarlet. This resulted in him getting a chance, but Scarlet locked the door and walked away with the key. McIntyre started to climb the cage after hitting Cross with a huge suplex from the top rope. Cross tried to escape by the door, but he was not able to, as the key was with Scarlet, who was fumbling to unlock the door. This gave Drew ample time to leave the ring via the cage wall, and that's what he did. He won the match with Cross escaping seconds later, frustrated with the loss. Drew McIntyre defeated Karrion Cross. The bloodline arrived, with Roman Reigns ignoring the question about Logan Paul, while Paul Heyman spoke in his stead, talking about how Paul was only talking about a lucky punch and had stacked the deck in his favor, but was still the one who would end up losing. AJ Styles led the OC out to face Balor, Priest, and Dominic. However, the Bullet Club was mentioned by name on WWE TV by the commentators, something that they had avoided doing for quite a long time despite having stars from the faction on the roster. The Judgment Day looked to isolate Carl Anderson in their corner, but it was not really working. Anderson followed Dominic to the outside and Priest took him out with a super kick. Dominic tried to take advantage of his team's interference, but Anderson kicked out. Balor came in and took control of him, but it didn't take too long for things to break down. AJ hit Dominic with a 
knee to the head and then faced down Balor. Finn locked in the figure four, but Styles got out and Dominic took him out. Styles and Balor fought for control on the top rope and it ended with a superplex and two electric chairs simultaneously. AJ looked to end things by going for the phenomenal forearm, but was stopped by Rhea. Rhea got him on her shoulders and then sent him face first into the apron in a reverse electric chair. This knocked him out, sending him back into the ring. That was all that was needed by Balor and he hit him with the coup de grace from the top rope before pinning him to pick up the win. The Judgment Day defeated the OC. Omos and Braun Strowman faced off, and the contrast of size between the two became apparent. Strowman was the smaller man in the equation, something that fans are not used to at all. Omos looked like he was not putting in any effort at all. He was throwing Braun around the ring like he was nothing. Strowman kept getting up and then hitting, but no matter what he did, it was not enough. He stopped him and kept hitting him back. Braun finally showed a fighting spirit and seemed to beat back the superstar, pushing him back again and again. Braun and Omos both fell out of the ring. Braun tried to take him out with the train tackle, but when he bumped into him, he fell back immediately. Omos and Braun got back in the ring and Strowman hit Omos quite hard. He then picked him up and hit him with the giant running power slam. That was enough and he got the win and the pin from the superstar. Braun Strowman defeated Omos. Everything was on the line for the Usos as their undisputed WWE Tag Team title were on the line against the Brawling Brutes. The match saw Pete Dunne, aka Butch, show more of his old character than he had shown ever since he was repackaged and came to the main roster. He did the old breaking the fingers of Jay Uso and bit them. The Brutes were in control of the match and for most of it, but Jay got control of it for a while. He tried to lock on Butch, but Jay's hand had been previously injured and it looked like it was broken. The pain was too much for him at the time, and with Butch putting further pressure on it and snapping it on his shoulder, it became clear that the Usos were in trouble. The Brutes pressed their advantage attacking them, but Butch was isolated for the most part. Jimmy and Jay both tried their best to get the win, and that's what happened at the end with the finisher, the 1D. Butch didn't see the tag. Jay was the one left watching while Jimmy took him out to retain the titles. The Usos defeated the Brawling Brutes to retain their title. Bailey looked to get the win and had the approach going into it that she would take her out. She used the ponytail to try and keep her down, sending her into the steel steps. Bailey set up the table as well to put Bianca through, but missed the opportunity. Bailey appeared to fall awkwardly off the ramp and tried to fake an ankle injury. She then attacked Bianca from behind the referee. The match continued with Bailey taking the kendo stick to punish Bianca. She then pushed the steel steps against the ring and trapped Belair under them with the ladder. Bianca still got up, only to get beaten down again by Bailey. She still got up and lifted up the steps. She hit Bailey with the spine buster on the steps. Bailey got back up and Bianca almost hit her with the kendo stick, but made a run for it to the match instead. Belair followed her and hit her with multiple stick shots until the stick broke. Both women took the brunt of the Bailey to Belly and it almost put them both out of action. Bailey pushed a case into Belair. Belair fell into the box and shut it. The star burst out of it and knocked Bailey out. She rolled the box toward Bailey, but she avoided it. Belair went for the KOD, but Bailey reversed into a crossface. Belair appeared to pass out and the referee began the count. Belair got up, but Bailey drove up in a golf cart. Belair got out of it and knocked her out of it. Bailey was at the top of the golf cart and Belair joined her up there. She then got back in the car after beating Bailey up and leaving her on the top of the cart. She drove them down to the ring next to the table. She pulled Bailey down, flipping her on the table, but she bounced off. Instead, Belair put her through it after that when she got back to her feet. Bailey still got up at nine. They brought steel chairs into the ring and then Belair laid Bianca on top of it. She then went for the dive, but Bailey rolled out of the way with Belair landing on the chairs. The two fought and Belair put Bailey between a ladder and pushed the ladder under the ring post. She was not able to get out of it in time and that was it. Bianca Belair retained after beating Bailey. Bray Wyatt made his way out to the ring and said that he came from a prestigious wrestling family. He talked about how he always wanted to be one of the greatest because of the family that he came from and needed to be the best of all of his family. The crowd chanted yes, he was. He said that he gave in and did everything he thought that he needed to do. He wore the mask of the monster with pride. However, while he was was wearing the mask, he didn't feel pain and was not afraid of anything. He was untouchable. He said he didn't want to be remembered as the fiend. His name was Bray Wyatt, and he shouted it out for everyone to hear. He said that he was back in WWE to rewrite the ending of his story. However, he was interrupted by a video on the screen. Uncle Howdy appeared on the screen and said that Wyatt would go too far, and that he would not be able to go back, giving him a warning about the mask, saying that he would be proven right by Wyatt's own actions.
The match kicked off with Roman Reigns smiling at Paul and clearly not taking him seriously. He threw Paul back and walked around. Paul came back with a takedown and took Roman Reigns down again. Reigns was surprised but hit him with a right hand. Paul tried a right hand of his own but Roman got out of the ring looking wary about the one lucky punch threat. Roman got back in but Paul was clearly putting up more of a threat than anyone expected. He hit Roman with the dive from the barrier and looked like he was going to win. Paul and Roman were both pushing each other to their extremes with Roman hitting an uppercut to take out Paul after a dive. Roman was doing well and was mouthing off at Paul, name dropping Mr. Beast. Paul went on attack again and again, hitting him with dives. He hit him with the Superman punch and then went for the sweet chin music. Roman stopped him and hit him with the Uranagi, but Logan kicked out. Roman went for the Superman punch but got stopped with the shot to the body. Paul hit him with a huge punch and staggered Reigns, getting a near fall following a Superman punch of his own. Paul laid out Roman on the table and then started to take selfies. He then went to the top rope and hit the splash on Roman through the commentary table. The Usos came out and took out Logan Paul's friend. Jake Paul came out with a full entrance with music playing. He started to attack the Usos and took them out, but Solo Sokoa came out and that was enough of a distraction. Logan took out the Usos, but when he got back in the ring, Roman was ready. Logan was alone in the ring and Roman Reigns hit him with the Superman punch and then the spear. Roman Reigns defeats Logan Paul to retain his title. And this was your Crown Jewel Report. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later.